Welcome to the first podcast of God Speed Wyoming. This is Jen Krause, your host, and I have to say how excited I am to be here today and be here sharing God Speed Wyoming with all of you as well as my story. So thank you for taking the time to be here today. Uh, before we start off, I'd just like to take a moment just to thank Dr. Scott Nickerson and Ann Nickerson and the family Nickerson Family Foundation as they just helped to support this podcast so much and I just want to take say thank you for believing in me and just your support over this podcast. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Bob Grammons and the Sheridan Media crew. Just so thankful for them also believing in this podcast, supporting me in this. Um, I am not technical at all, so I am very thankful for their technical support and just the promotion of all this. So I just want to take a moment for all those that are helping here at Sheridan Media to make this happen. Just super thankful. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the big question here is what is the Godspeed Wyoming podcast? So to understand what Godspeed Wyoming podcast is, it just goes back to understanding a little bit about me and my story. So many of you that can't see me right now or maybe you don't know me, um, I live my life in a wheelchair. I was in a severe car accident when I was 16 years old, a very tra tragic car accident. Um, in that car accident, I was going too fast as probably 16 year olds would do. And I wrecked my car. I hit a guardrail head on um, and I was ejected out of my car, 10 feet out of my car. And it was just unbelievably devastating. During that time, I broke my back, I broke my neck, I punctured my lungs, which my rib cage just totally went through my lungs. Um, the worst part was is that I severed my spinal cord. So I was sent flight for life from a small little town in southern Colorado to Colorado Springs, Colorado, which is one of the larger trauma hospitals there, where I would find myself fighting for my life. I was placed on a large rotating bed where I would go side to side to help with my circulation. I had a huge ventilator on. But what I found was just, I found myself in and out of consciousness, alive, but not able to speak. I couldn't tell my parents that I was alive. I couldn't tell them that I was inside. I would just see family coming in, crying over me as if I was dying, as if I was already dead. It was just devastating. You know, in that moment, all I could really do was do what my parents taught me to do. And I just began to pray. I just began to pray. You know, so many times we reason with God or reckon with God, however we want to call it, that I knew something very different was happening in my life and something was going to change forever. But I just promised God that if he would just save my life, that I would just move forward. I would just move forward and not dwell on maybe what had been taken from me. And I just really spent time in that moment with God and really believed that he could save my life. And I'm really blessed to say within days of that prayer, um, my ventilator was taken off, which was just so amazing and so beautiful. I began to breathe on my own soon. And I never forget when the trauma doctor came in and just looked at me and told me, you are a true miracle. Lungs just don't heal like this. These type of things just don't happen. You know, and when you're 16 years old fighting for your life and a miracle like that happens to you, it will change your life forever. And as I was starting to be able to transfer out of that ICU and go into the next steps, they said I would be going into some physical rehabilitation. I wasn't too sure what that meant. I know my body was really dipped debilitated, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I was getting ready to transfer to the ICU. And I, one night I was spending some time with a nurse who was moving around my legs for me. And I would look and I realized I can't feel that. Like I can't feel what she's doing with my legs. So I just asked her, I said, what's going on? And she said, you know, nobody's told you yet. And I explained to her, that no, like nobody's told me. I knew something was different, but nobody had shared with me what was going on with my body. And so she took her finger and she placed it at the chin, top of my chin, went all the way down my neck and she reached my chest and she said, tell me when you stop feeling. And I stopped feeling right at my chest level. 
And she explained to me I was what was called a T5 spinal cord injury and that I would never walk again. And that, I have to say, was so devastating to me. You know, I had so many questions for God in that moment. Like, why would he save my life but not heal all of me? And I began to think, how could I live my life in a wheelchair? Who does that? I had never met anybody who lived their life in a wheelchair. I began to think, would I ever dance again when you're 16 years old? These are the type of questions you ask. Then I started to think, who would ever want to marry me? How would I ever have children? What would I do with my life? And it was such a scary, desperate moment for me. And I was transferred out of that ICU and I went into this physical rehabilitation hospital and I sat in my wheelchair for the first time. And as I looked in that mirror, I felt so ugly. I just couldn't believe that this was happening to me. I was just completely devastating. And I found myself night after night after praying so hard that God would save my life. I began to pray that God would take my life. There were even times that I would lay in that bed, if to be honest with all of you, and just sometimes hold my breath and just be like, I don't think I could wake up in the morning. I don't think I could take 30 minutes to put on my clothes every day. I don't think I could face my friends living in this wheelchair. I don't think I'm strong enough for this. But sure enough, every morning I would wake up and there I would be. The light would be coming in and there I would be sitting in that wheelchair again. But I had this amazing person that came into my life at this time. And I honestly believe that God puts people in your life for times that you need them. And she was a wonderful nurse. Her name was Jennifer as well. Um, she was a new grad, so we weren't too far away in ages. I think she was in her early 20s. You know, I turned 17 when I was in the hospital and she just began to connect. It's amazing when people take the time to be present. It's amazing what happens when people take the time to care. And Jen truly did that to me. Jennifer, this nurse, she would, on her break, she'd come and hang out with me when I was in my hospital room. She began to bring me popcorn and movies and magazines, and we'd talk about boys and actors and what was happening, and she made me feel so alive. And she helped me to forget what I was struggling through at that time and just helped me to feel so normal. And during those times, she really helped motivated, mo motivate me that, yes, like you can live your life in a wheelchair. And there are people that are out there that is successful and that just live their lives and have wonderful lives in wheelchairs. And at that moment, she had talked to me about, you know, what are you going to do? And I was going into my senior year of high school, never thought about college. You know, I had this great ability of being like, a very D average student. Um, I had the great gift of gab, so I was not into studies at all. That was not a focus of mine. And so I was thinking, how could I go to college? How could I go to college with the grades that I had? How could I go to college in a wheelchair? What does that look like for me? But she really helped me to start to believe in myself. So after I was discharged from that hospital, I did graduate high school and I did go to college. And I decided that I wanted to help people that had injuries like mine. I had a wonderful social worker while I was in the hospital. So I went to school to be a social worker and four years later, I graduated with a degree in social work and I would tell you that that was not easy. You know, never really having a studying plan or never studying or anything like that, like that, those were, for very long years, but I took a lot of time to, again, just God put great people in my life, just great resources available to me to help teach me to study. I really had to change my perspective of, hey, I am somebody who doesn't know how to study. I am somebody who's not smart to believing in myself and saying, I belong in this room. God put me here in this college classroom to be, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't without him. It wouldn't be here if he didn't think that I could be here. And really telling myself, I belong here. Like God saved my life for a reason. 
So I was so blessed. Um, I started as a medical social worker at St. Mary Corwin Hospital in Pueblo, Colorado. And what I found that was such a surprise to me is that I had these natural leadership ability skills. So many people, times people talk about the unspoken leader. Um, and I would hear that time after time, but I had never really been a part of that. And I found myself being that unspoken leader around my coworkers within the social work department. And then one of the administrators really encouraged me and said, you could be a leader. You could be a director within this institution someday. And he encouraged me to go back to school. So I did. I received my master's in business administration. So there I was again, um, back in school, this time doing master level statistics, which again was not um, very easy for me, but definitely where I needed to be at that time. And I was able to receive my MBA with an emphasis in healthcare management. From there, by the age of 27, I was a supervisor over 103 employees. Um, I was a director over everything that was post-acute care. And it was just such a blessing to me. You know, I learned so much from so many great leaders um, and just really excited about what I could do in the leadership role. Three years after that, when I was 30 years old, I just met a man that would change my life. His name was Mr. Darby Brockett. And I found out that he was starting physical rehabilitation hospitals for people that were just like me, people that were new spinal cord injuries, new brain injuries that had just had new disabilities that needed to overcome them. And there I was like, that was me. I was in those physical rehabil. I was in a physical rehabilitation hospital. And so I interviewed with Darby. Um, he was looking for CEOs. Um, for his upcoming hospitals. And I thought to myself, I had never been a CEO, didn't know what it meant to be a CEO. But again, God was opening this door for this interview. So it was my responsibility just to walk right through it, not be afraid or doubt myself. You know, every time I roll into a room, I don't walk into a room. I have lots of eyes on me because I'm different. But Darby didn't see me as different. When I rolled into that room with him, he just seen me as Jen. He just seen me as somebody. And I just so appreciated that about him. And he hired me on the spot that day to be a chief operating officer for him at one of his hospitals. And within that year, he transferred me to Prescott, Arizona, where I ran and became one of his CEOs of one of his rehabilitation hospitals in Prescott, Arizona. And I felt so blessed that God had given me this ability to just not quit, not give up. And there I was sitting as a CEO, um, as a rehabilitation hospital, being able to encourage other people with disabilities, new disabilities, and be able to show them they could do things with their life. Like here I was in a wheelchair and a CEO of a hospital. It was just such a blessing. And so during that time when I was in Arizona, I would meet the most amazing human being. I would meet my now husband, Dustin Krause, who is a Wyoming native, comes from the big town of Lusk, Wyoming. Um, and I'm telling you, God just put such an amazing person in my life. He is one of the most kind, gentle, just loving individuals. You know, when I met Dustin, he's pretty outdoorsy. And he just told me, there's not going to be a place that I go that you won't be able to go. And he has really made the outdoors accessible for me, which has just been amazing. You know, I'm up in these mountains. He created this human looking backpack. And thank God he's so strong. He's a former Marine. And he just puts me in that human backpack and just puts me on his back and we just go places that I would have never imagined that I would be able to go. And it's all because of that amazing husband that I have. And a year after we were married, you know, we really talked about wanting to have children. And, you know, being a spinal cord injury, I'm very high risk um, medically to have children nat naturally. But we just really felt, again, if it was God's purpose for me, to have a child naturally, I would be able to get pregnant. And I was so blessed within that first year to be able to get pregnant. And I was able to give natural birth to 
this amazing little son of mine by the name of Waylon Kraus. And yes, my husband is a big Waylon Jennings fan. So Waylon was going to be a Waylon no matter what. So Waylon Kraus is a fighter just like his mama. He was six weeks premature and he just fought through it. You know, there was a lot that him and I had to go through. We were flighted to Denver, Colorado, just high risk. But they said that Waylon would be in the hospital at least six weeks, if not longer. But in seven days, Waylon decided that he wanted to come home. And he recovered really quickly. And within a week of being in the NICU, Waylon was home um, with me and Dustin. And Waylon, I would have to say, out of all the great things that have happened in my life, having that son um, has been the most amazing thing in my life. And I, I was still in my CEO leadership role with Ernest Health, um, this rehabilitation company. When I had Waylon, you know, and it's just a lot of pressure. It's just a lot of hours being a hospital administrator. So I felt like it became a point when Waylon turned two years old that I really had to decide between family and career. I mean, it got to the point where am I here to enjoy my family or I'm here to focus on my career? I just really couldn't do both and do both well. So Dustin always wanted to move back to Wyoming and we couldn't think of a better place to raise our beautiful son. So I applied for a position. Um, I felt like it was time to transfer from healthcare. So I took a chance and applied for a position at Sheridan College as their executive director of the Sheridan College Foundation. And I felt so blessed that they hired me and just believed in me. And I started my career at Sheridan College eight years ago and just haven't looked back. It's been just such a great move. And within that first year of being in here in Wyoming, I was accepted into the Leadership Wyoming program, um, which is just a great leadership program here within Wyoming. And I was able to go to different communities within Wyoming and learn so many things about this amazing state and just meet so many amazing people that are just working so hard to make Wyoming great. And I have to tell you, I was inspired. I was just so moved by the state of Wyoming. I was so moved by the leadership in Wyoming. It was just so wonderful that I just jumped in. I just jumped into my community. I became a Rotarian. I joined the food group, which is just an amazing group here. I joined their board, um, which really helps kids that just have a hard time with food or just food insufficiencies. And it's just been such a blessing. I believe in small businesses. So I became a chamber board member here in Sheridan County. And right now I'm the chamber board president, just believing in our communities. I'm a, I'm very involved in our church. We have a great church with Summit Church out of Buffalo and just pouring in and just doing what I can do um, in my leadership role to be able to give back to Wyoming and back to the Wyoming communities. During that time, um, we received it. We got a new president at the college who just said, hey, would you also like to be the vice president of student affairs? Um, so now I have dual roles. Um, so the past four years, I've been the executive director of the Sheridan College Foundation, as well as vice president of students at Sheridan College. And it's just been great. Leadership just tends to follow me around. I can't help it, um, but I just love it. And I just hope that I'm the supervisor with grace that God expects me to be to those individuals, which now leads me to why Godspeed Wyoming, why Godspeed Wyoming, why this podcast right now? And, you know, over this time, this I realized this year is my 30th anniversary of my spinal cord injury. My spinal cord injury was June 12th of 1994, so 30 years. And it just gave me a lot of time to just stop and reflect over this year. You know, my survival story, my God story, and just my purpose. You know, why, again, why did God save my life? And I really feel like it's for this time, this moment. And lots of words started coming to me that I just started thinking about. I just started thinking about light just shining my light 
um, after COVID, I feel like there's so many podcasts of, or just information or just news out there that's so dark. You just hear so much darkness every time you flip on the TV or listen to something. It's just so much darkness. And I decided just to share my light, to share my God story and help to share others as well and use my influence. The two words, influence and light, just kept coming to me. And I thought, you know, after all these years, all these roles in leadership and just leading other people, and I know that I'm a person of influence and just be able to share my, just shine my light and use my influence to do so. And a lot of people have asked me about the name Godspeed Wyoming. Like, why, where did that come from, Jen? And so, you know, if I looked in the dictionary about Godspeed Wyoming, the dictionary says that it's an expression of good wishes to a person starting a journey or wishing a prosperous journey. So I couldn't think of anything better for Wyoming, anything better for people out in our communities, out in our state. I was just having a prosperous journey. So that's where Godspeed Wyoming comes from. And then anybody who knows me knows I probably drive a little bit too fast. So speed might come into that a little bit, but just loving God, loving the speed of everything that everything goes through. So just Godspeed Wyoming just felt like such a wonderful fit for me and this podcast. So this is where you all come in and just helping me join in this journey. So I'm asking um, that you would help me. I would love to be able to share other stories of just inspiring individuals who are shining their light or who have overcome any type of hardship. And I would just love to be able to either interview them here on this Godspeed Wyoming podcast or be able to share that on social media Um, on my social media pages for Godspeed Wyoming. So if you know someone who has an inspiring story or is shining the light, you know, those people that you just look at and they just glow, I want to hear about that. So if you wouldn't mind emailing me um, information about these individuals or information about these stories at GodspeedWyoming.com. Again, that's um, Godspeed, I'm sorry, it's an email, so godspeedwyoming at gmail.com. Again, it's godspeedwyoming at gmail.com. So if you could just email me um, those inspiring stories, I would love to be able to share them on this podcast. Again, godspeedwyoming at gmail.com. So as I wrap up here, if you are enjoying this podcast or if you enjoyed this time together, I am asking you to please rate this podcast. If you feel like it's good, like please rate it. If you're enjoying it and you just know someone who would be inspired by it, I'm just asking you to please share it. Just help me as we start in this journey um, just to share the light with other people. So I just want to take a moment again to say thank you. Thank you for listening. And this is Jen Krause signing off. Godspeed, Wyoming.